Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Katie, I'm a mixed media sketchbook artist and today I want to share a little secret I've been keeping in January with you all. So I've been doing a 31 day art challenge all the way from New Year's Day to the 31st of January, which is today. And I've done daily art challenges before, you might have seen them on my channel if you've been a long standing viewer. I've got a playlist all about my year long daily art challenge, I then did a 100 day project last year. And so this one was a lot smaller, it was only 31 days, but the big difference is I kept it to myself. I didn't share anywhere that I was doing this, I only told my husband, so nobody knew about this daily art challenge and I really wanted to see how it changed my art, keeping it to myself, if I had the drive to continue it without having that sort of accountability from sharing online and just seeing what I created knowing that I wasn't having to then post and share every day. So very different to the ones I've done before and I thought that today I would show you all 31 of the drawings that I've done in my sketchbook and talk a little bit more about how I found it. So like I said, I didn't tell anyone about this and when I've done them before it was the accountability I think that really kept me going. I obviously only did this for 31 days so it was a lot shorter and definitely felt more manageable. If you are going to do a daily art challenge, I have published a video here on YouTube sharing my thoughts and tips because I think making it manageable for you is really what's important. So I'll link that up in the cards and down in the description if you are thinking of doing a daily art challenge yourself. So like I said, I have done this before, but I shared and photographed it every day and posted it on my Instagram. And that gave me a lot more pressure because I needed to then photograph it in the light. I really had high pressure on myself to make it good, which obviously I don't really believe in good and bad art. But it was really interesting to see my mindset shift knowing that I wasn't then doing that. And there's a few things I found with this challenge that I've done differently because I was doing it just for me. The first one is that I actually created quite a few at night. Usually I don't do that because I like to record my process or put it on Instagram stories as I'm going when I'm doing my more public challenges just to try and keep up that momentum. But I actually found that I was doing more at night. Sometimes I did do them in the morning, it did vary, but a lot of the times when I've been really busy in the day and I realise I haven't done my daily art, I'll just grab my sketchbook and do something really, really quick. Now when I was doing the other ones, I definitely felt the pressure of creating art that felt more polished. And there is still some art like that in here when I had more time, but there's also ones where I literally only had 5-10 minutes. And I think that's really, really important. When you are doing your daily art challenge, you obviously have to juggle life, you have to do everything else in between. And so for this one, it was definitely a case of that. I'm a lot busier now than I have been in previous years. And so trying to juggle this challenge on top of my daily work and life in general was a little bit more challenging. So I am going to do a little sketchbook tour and flip you through all of the pages so far. But I also want to point out a couple of things before we go into that. So some of these I have recorded, um, you might see them in future videos. So there are some where I did do it in the day with the knowledge that I was going to be sharing it. But there are other ones where I did it just for me, so there are quite random spreads where I just drew what I fancied. There's also a few where I really focused online and you'll notice that as a theme throughout these 31 days. So over on my Patreon we focus online this month, that was the theme and I really wanted to see how it was going to affect my style. I obviously talk more about this in depth over on my Patreon, but line isn't something that I generally use in my style. I mostly put down block colours and shapes and add on a few details. But line work was something I was really interested in testing and experimenting. So a lot of the experiments and pages I've done in here are related to that. And then the last thing that I want to mention before I talk you through all of the art is that there is one day that I missed. So on the 20th, I totally forgot. I completely forgot that I was doing this daily art challenge. You'd think being 20 days through, I would have got it into more of a habitual thing. But I was really, really busy. It was a Saturday. There was a lot of driving. There was a lot of things going on. And I just forgot. So although on some of the days I did remember and I did it really quickly in five, ten minutes when I had a spare moment, on that day I just didn't. And part of me was like, should I have backfilled? Should I have pretended that I'd done it? But the truth is I didn't. And I think that's really, really important to share with you. If you skip a day in your daily art challenge, it doesn't mean it's all over, you're not a failure, it's totally fine and totally normal. You've just got to jump back on it the next day and that's what I did. So you'll see that there is a gap from the 19th to the 21st because I didn't do the 20th. 
And I think with challenges like these, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what life will throw at us. So it's important to be kind to ourselves if we are missing it. It really doesn't matter. You can just jump straight back onto it the next day. So I thought that was really important to share with you. It may not be perfect, but that's what life is. And some of these pieces I'm still really, really proud of. Some of them not so much, but it doesn't matter. It's about the practice, it's about creating in my sketchbook, and I really enjoyed this challenge. The main reason I did this was to prove to myself that I could do it. As a full-time artist, I actually don't draw that much, and I really wanted to see what would happen if I really pushed myself. I very, very rarely create daily. If it wasn't for this challenge, I certainly wouldn't have created half or even three quarters of the amount of artwork that I've done. And even though some of them are quick sketches, it's still been a really great project for me. Obviously, I've done this before, so I know how important it is to practice and how I always say just taking five to ten minutes really makes a difference. And this has 100% cemented that fact for me. I think it's been a really good challenge. I've really seen some ideas develop from working in this every day. So without any further waffle, let's dive into the actual sketchbook tour and I hope you enjoy seeing the art I created. So I started this sketchbook on New Year's Day, as I say, and you'll have seen this one because I shared it as my first video in the new year about starting a new sketchbook. So it took me quite a while to begin. I had finished my other sketchbook at the end of December and although I'd been creating, I'd been using other sketchbooks. I knew I was going to move into this one, but for some reason there was that little blocker in my head about not starting. So that video was all about that. I shared some ideas from my audience about how to begin a sketchbook and it felt really good to just start. So if you want to see the full process for this one, I will link that up in the cards and I share more about what I use in that video. So because I'd started and then after I'd done that, I knew I wanted to continue that momentum and start this daily art challenge, I got going. So these are a little bit different for me. This was done on the second, this was done on the third. Now you'll notice throughout this sketchbook that I've done like half pages. Usually when I sit down for a session, I'll generally fill a whole spread. But where I was quite tight on time, it just wasn't possible. So you'll notice throughout that I've done half and half, just because it was more manageable that way. And that meant I could continue the challenge without having to worry. This was done with coloured pencils. I wasn't focusing on line at this point. Um, I just wanted to create what I wanted to do. So. These aren't focused on line, but this was referenced from a photo that Emma Carlyle shared on her Patreon. She was doing a daily art challenge. There's quite a few artists who have done one in January, but this one was from her Patreon. And then this one was from my own reference share, which I do monthly on my Patreon, where I was sharing a, I think it was 1963 Sears toy catalogue, and I just really wanted to draw some of them. I really like this Barbie. She's a little bit lopsided with her eyes, and this isn't accurate in terms of perspective, but it was a really fun spread and lots of colours. A bit different to what I would normally do. Day four was for Burb Fest, so that's a January drawing challenge. I always find challenges and prompt lists like that are really helpful if you are stuck for what to draw on daily art challenges. It's really nice to sort of be told what to do, but for me, I don't like having that for the full month. I like to just dip in and out depending on what I fancy. So I didn't stick to one bird. I decided to do a few from that first week of the prompt list. And I used Ecoline brush pens, Tombow brush pens, colored pencil, and then some near color. So this was really fun. I really enjoyed drawing birds. Some of them aren't very accurate, but you'll notice here where I have added an outline. So I was really starting to think about line and Adding outlines to my birds isn't something I would normally do, but obviously as we were focusing on line this month on Patreon, it made sense. And I definitely think it finishes them off nicely and it still works with my style despite not usually outlining my art. Day five, this was a really fun one and a very different technique to my usual. I referenced this from one of my favorite reference books of old English villages and for this one, I did line first. So I did all of these sort of burgundy lines and then I came in with my Kurotaki watercolor set and filled them in. And I found that really nice. It was really calming to just fill in my shapes that I'd already put down from the line. Usually I put down my block shapes first and then I'll work on top of that. So it was a lot more mindful to just fill in what I've already got. Although I did find I was a little bit tighter than I usually like. So there's a bit more detail than I would usually add in. 
it was still really fun to work in this way and I found it really helpful as an exercise for line changing my usual process, changing my method from putting down my colour and shape first and adding line on top to just doing line first. And I think it's really important to change up and experiment with things like that as an artist because I think we grow more from when we are out of our comfort zone. I also did do a video on my Patreon sharing this technique if you want to see it in more detail. And then this one, so again, focusing on line, I was just doing a study of an oast house. These are usually found in Kent. It's where they like dry their hops. And this isn't something that I would show on Instagram. It's a bit of an odd one, really. But I, again, was playing with the line. So I put down my acrylic markers and then I really worked on top, outlined the house, added more line than I normally would. And I do think it's quite graphic and bold, which I'd say this one is more how I usually would work. And this one was sort of pushing the line work a little bit further. So here's another one where I split it into two days. So on the 7th, I did this one. I absolutely never approach landscapes in this way, but obviously I really wanted to see how I do it just with lines. So I just used the one Luminance pencil, found a reference online and drew this. I wouldn't say it was very successful, but I did learn from it. I learned about the contrast of pushing this back into the distance by creating lighter lines and having this one in the front as darker line. So that was interesting. And then the 8th, I did this from a Morton Hilmer live stream. So he has this nature live stream that runs 24 seven and it's just in the Norwegian forest and you're kind of looking at this little stream and there's wildlife and birds that come in all the time. So I really love this. It was very quick. I didn't spend very long, but what I like the most is the color palette. I really like this three color palette. And then also this one. So I really played with the texture of line. I'm so used to doing my line just as one stroke. Whereas with this one, I was sort of going back and forth to create that texture. So that was really fun. And I really like this. Just something about this color palette and these sort of quick studies that was quite exciting to me. This one was, again, for Burb Fest. So this one was the prompt for King Penguin. They do have a short list of birds, so I decided to take one from there. And I did this with a dip pen and ink. So again, very different to my usual. And I put down some color and then I came in with my dip pen to add on the really heavy lines. So you'll know that this isn't really my usual style. If I was to draw penguins without focusing on line month, they wouldn't look like this. But like I said, I do think it's important to mix things up and try different mediums and techniques. And I still like this spread. It definitely feels more like a research journal sort of thing where I've added on lots of different notes from learning more about the penguin. And I do find doing spreads like this not only encourages me to learn more about what I'm drawing, but also feel more engaged with the topic. This one was a bit of a messy one. Again, the 10th on the left and then the 11th on the right. This was done really quickly with some leftover gouache I had on my palette and just from taking a photo with a walk I went on in the evening the night before with my sister and then on the 10th just using that photo in my camera roll to create this really quick study. So again I put down the colour and the shape first but I came in on top with my dark indigo luminance pencil just to add in these three silhouettes and just that bit of line work really transformed this one so I was really pleased with that experiment. This one was done after doing a live stream with my patrons where we were drawing lots of birds. That's in another sketchbook but I did want to do something in this sketchbook because I wanted to keep all 31 days of January in here. And I wouldn't say this was successful, I definitely prefer some of the other ones I did on that live stream, but it was still helpful to do my line studies. I was using a Pentel brush pen Again, some brush pens as well, putting down the colour. And it's quite messy and I don't really like the shape of the bird. But again, it's just playing and experimenting and that's what this month was all about for me. So this was a spread which influenced the line workshop that I did run for my patrons. But again, I was playing around with the lines. So I put down my colour blocking first. So this was done with some Tombow brush pens and also some Albrecht Dura watercolour markers. So here I was playing more with pattern. You can see where I've sort of varied the lines a little bit, trying to create the texture of all of the plants and it really transformed it and I was really pleased with how these came out. I prefer this one on the left than to the right, but it was still really helpful for me to play with the line and just see how much it influenced the artwork by adding that on top. 
Then we have this one. I found a reference online and again I put the line on top of the colour so it definitely feels a bit more like it's in my comfort zone doing that way but I don't really like this one. I think the colours are very different for me so perhaps it's just that. But I don't think the line work is strong enough to really carry this one. I used a mix of colours as well whereas I think if I just used one so maybe the dark indigo it would have been a bit more successful but I just don't think this one has the strength that I wanted it to or how I imagined it in my head. Still, it was nice to use some different colours and I think this was still really helpful for me with my line work. This one was a spread just drawing some of the materials, a very quick one. I drew the outlines first and coloured them in, so again that's different to my usual method. And this didn't take too long, I just coloured them in with the brush pens, some neo colours and just tried to match it to the tools I was drawing. On the 16th I took part in Omar Wynn's fruit challenge. So I decided to do her day eight, which was orange. And I was watching her Patreon process video where she was doing the exact same thing. And I felt so inspired to just jump in and follow along. So that's what this was. And I used quite a mix of media. So I think I used a bit of this Posca beige marker, some orange and yellow gelato. So that was really fun to create some of this texture and then just wet my brush to try and smush it about the page because they are water soluble. And then I came in with some of my Luminance pencil just to add in some of the line work. Although this was quite a rough and messy spread because it didn't take very long, it was still really fun and I really enjoyed doing this challenge along with Omar. Okay, so this one I was really tight on time. I only had five minutes, so really quick one. But again, I took that colour palette from the Morton Hilmer study I did and I tried to do something similar. But it definitely lacked something, obviously only five minutes, so it was never going to be a masterpiece. But still something in there with using the light blue for the shadow and trying to keep some of the white of the page to create the snow. You can see I completely left the rest of the thread blank. So on the 18th I did a double page, 19th I did a double page, and then as we know, as I mentioned, the 20th I didn't do it. I planned on coming back in to put it in here but then I didn't and so I just carried on. So maybe I'll come back further along in the sketchbook to fill the spread because I don't like having a blank page, but it kind of just reminds me that I skipped a day and that's okay. So this was the spread I did on the Patreon workshop I mentioned that was influenced by those other two pages. So this was done on a Zoom call with all my patrons teaching that method of putting down that colour first and really using your line work to create the interest, to create all of this texture, to show that like there's a bit of lawn here so that's horizontal, lots of flowers growing up so they're vertical, lots of different textures here and I really like that technique, it felt very much in my comfort zone. But I also did some line studies, some really quick warm ups with them, um, just in another sketchbook. So again, I came back with doing a landscape with line only. This was quite a quick one, only 15 minutes. I really like the colours here. This is a colour palette I would never normally pick, but I just got those out from my Luminance pencil pot. And although I don't think it works, and I don't really like doing a landscape just with line, it was still really helpful. I enjoyed doing the different directions of line, which I picked up from the workshop studies. And I still think it was really useful to do. I'm just not sure I would do it for landscapes going forward. Another study from the Morton Hilmer live stream. So you can see we've jumped from the 19th to the 21st here. So obviously skip the 20th. I just used two tools here. So one was a really light gray where I mapped out the main shapes. And then I came in with the dark indigo luminance pencil just to define all the shapes more and also to add in the dark shadows at the back. This was the first time an otter has visited that live stream so there, I think there is a clip of it on his YouTube channel if you want to see it. I'll leave the link down below if you did want to see that because I find it really fun to draw from so I definitely recommend it. And again I was playing around with the texture of the line so going back and forth just to try and create some more interest. I think it's hard to spot the otter if you didn't know it was there, but I do quite like this as a study and it's not often I just use one or two materials on a page. This was done on the 22nd, so I've written that as a wee tear but it's actually not. And I did film the process for this one so that will be coming on a YouTube video soon. Um, but I just used Ecoline brush pens and some Neo colours and then the dark indigo pencil just again to create those outlines. 
I definitely felt more comfortable using lines at this point. Obviously, we were a good way through the month and it felt more natural for me to do the lines. I found at the beginning it felt unnatural and I had to keep reminding myself to not go back to my usual methods. So this one felt a little bit easier and although I don't love some of these birds, I feel like there's still an energy and a looseness to them which I do like. Okay, so a really big contrast really from these heavier lines to these. This is where I didn't really use line at all. Um, I was just playing with the colour palettes. I was really enjoying this softer, wintry mood. And so I took two references. This one was an amalgamation of ones I found online. And this one, again, was shared by Emma Carlyle. I feel like these are really calm and serene. I really like the softness. I spent a lot more time on these, but on two separate days. So normally I would do both of them and share it like in one go, but for this one I just didn't have the time, especially because I was really being slow and intentional building up the textures. So I just did this one on the 23rd and this one on the 24th. But I did use the exact same materials, so there's some white near colour here on top of the light blue pencil, some of this sky blue as well, but mostly pencils and just trying to build up the textures really subtly. The 25th was actually quite a quick one. Again, it was referenced from Emma Kalau's Patreon, but this was from her December drawing session when we were doing Foxes in the Snow. I couldn't make that session live, so I decided to watch the replay. I didn't do them in the time limits that she'd set, I just used the references she shared. So I combined two of the foxes into this one image. And I really had fun with this. I used acrylic paint that I had just bought and really wanted to try and play with the texture, which obviously is going to be February's theme. But I like this because it kind of merges the line with the texture. These directional lines here where I feel like adds a lot of energy and adding it to the sky, I wouldn't have done that if I wasn't focusing on line this month. So I love seeing how it develops and how it shows through in other areas without me really realizing. So I really love this piece. I use the acrylic I mentioned. At the back there is some Tombow brush pen and then some gelatos and colored pencils on top. This one was done with some gouache just to lay down the color and then coming in playing with line and texture again on top using Derwent Inktense pencils that I dipped in water just to create this really rough line. So I don't love this spread, but it's still really nice to see that textural line work and seeing that come into play. Then the 27th, I did this really quick spread using my acrylic markers. I put down really basic shapes with the acrylic markers and then I defined them more with the line. I don't think I was as heavy or as confident with my lines as I wanted to be, so these aren't great to me, but they were still really helpful. You can see where it's really helped to put that line in just to define the shape of the duck. It feels quite unfinished, but I, like I said, I didn't spend too long on there, so I'm still pleased with the feeling of this page. Then the 28th, again with acrylic markers. So a lot of these I mixed myself with the greens and I used a mix of brands here. I love this page. It really does feel like what I want to create feels like full of energy and again you can see I'm using line a lot more and this is how I can kind of see the line work merging in with my current style. So that was the whole idea of the month was to see how it developed in my work and I think this is quite a good one at showing how it has. So I did put down the base shape first and then I defined it with coloured pencils and my near colour pastels. The 29th and the 30th again it would look like I did this in one sitting and I normally would, but being tight on time, I did them separately. So I did these two on the left on the 29th and these two on the right on the 30th. I put down a blob shape with the beige Posca and then I worked on top with my brush pens and my colored pencils. So again, it's very serene and calm. I love the atmosphere from this spread. It feels really nice. It just feels cozy. And I think that comes from putting the beige Posca down first. So I wouldn't normally do it in two sittings, but it's been really helpful for me to learn that perhaps when I am so busy, it's okay to do things in little pieces and split it up in a more manageable way. And then lastly, the 31st. So that's today. This is what I drew this morning before filming this video. So some very quick wildflower studies. I just grabbed my reference book and I put down some brush pen first and then I defined the lines with my colored pencils. And I really love working in this way. I think it's really fun to put down my shape first because I find I'm looser than putting down my line first. So that's something I want to 
continue is kind of how I worked in the first place, but I wasn't using line as heavily as I have here. And so that's been really fun and definitely something I'm going to take forward. I don't like putting line first and then color, so I'm going to continue with color than line. But I talk more about that in my wrap up video on my Patreon if you are interested. I feel like I've ended on one where I've applied some of the things I've learned and still kept my style and my looseness, so that feels really good. And so this was the very last one I did for day 31, which is today, the last day of January. Will I be continuing this challenge? I don't think so. It's certainly not in this capacity, but it really has taught me that I can make time for art. I have to make excuses that I can't, but this has really proven to me that I don't need very long. This spread this morning took me 10 minutes before I sat down to create this video just so that I could tick it off and then film it. So it really doesn't take long and it is a lot about mindset and that's something that this monthly challenge has really proven to me. That being said, in February over on my Patreon we have a new theme of texture. So I actually want to do a texture a day so it won't be in this sketchbook, it will be in my little tiny royal talent sketchbook so it's not too big and I'm just going to try and create and play with texture each day in there. So it will be a daily challenge but very different to this one. It will still be really nice to create every day and I'm looking forward to that but yeah I probably will create more just because I've really learned that I can make time for this. I can just sit for five minutes and grab my brush pens or my pencils instead of scrolling on TikTok and so I'm definitely going to be taking that forward with me. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the artwork I've created without having that knowledge that I was going to be sharing it publicly. I hope that it's inspired you to create more regularly even if it's not daily and like I said I'll link all of my daily art challenge including that big video about how to tackle one down below in the description box. Let me know in the comments if you have a favourite from all of these 31 days of sketches but otherwise I hope you have a creative week. I will see you next Sunday in my new YouTube video. See you later!